In the first millennium BC, the nomadic tribes of Sox, Masagets, Sarmatians related to the Scythian tribes, the descendants of the ancient Aryans who worshipped the sun and fire, worldview close to the worldview of the ancient Turks, Tengrianism. According to experts, the Sox and Masagets spoke dialects close to the Eastern Iranian languages, the Indo-European language family. According to archaeological research, the indigenous ancient population of Kazakhstan and Altai, starting from the Neolithic era to the New Era, belonged to the large Caucasoid race. According to the hypothesis of the famous Kazakhstani journalist researcher Seyd Ahmed Kutukadam, stated in the book Dao of Altai, the birthplace of the ancient Aryans in, is Asia, Altai, located in the center of Eurasia. There were the most favorable climatic conditions for human living. 5,000 years ago, the ancient Aryans began to settle Eurasia. The Aryans migrated in three directions, to the east, to the Yellow River, to the south, to the territory of Kazakhstan, Central Asia, Iran, North India, and to the west, to Eastern Europe. This was the first great migration of peoples in the history of mankind. According to sources, in the 8th to 6th centuries BC, the first state formations of the Sox and Masagets appear, which were associated with the ancient civilizations of Assyria and Media. At the same time, there were a number of wars between the Sox and the Persian states. There is information about the Saka queen Zarina, who successfully fought the Median kingdom. The Greek historian Polian told the story of a Saka young man named Chirak, who having injured his body with a knife, came to the Persians and said that he was offended by the Sox. Becoming a guide, he led the army of the Persians into the waterless desert, where most of them died. Chirak gave his life to save his native land. He remained in the memory of descendants as a hero, as a symbol of love for the motherland and patriotism. The military art of the Sox and Masagets was at a high level. They were skilled archers. The Sox engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat after attacking the enemy with arrows. During the period of peaceful relations with the Persians, the Sox served as mercenaries of the Persians. In 558 BC, Sirius from Achaemenos clan became king of the Persians. During his reign, he created a huge empire including Transcaucasia, Asia Minor, the Middle East, and Northern India. It was the first empire in human history. Sirius was a great commander. In 529 BC, Sirius decided to conquer the Saxon Masagets, who lived in the area between the Sir Darya and the Amu Darya rivers. Sirius went on a military campaign with a huge army. The queen of the Masagets, Tamaris gathered an army against the Persians. The ancient Greek historian Herodotus described this battle between Persians and nomads as the most brutal battle in human history. The Persians were completely defeated. The invincible Sirius died in battle. After the battle, Tamaris ordered a leather bag to be filled with blood, dripped Sirius's head there, and said, You are thirsty for blood. Drink it. So the life of the great conqueror ended ingloriously. In 490 BC, the Sox took part in the war against the Greeks on the side of the Persians, fought at Marathon against the Spartan king Leonidas, and also took part in the Battle of Gaugamela against Alexander the Great in 331 BC. In 330 BC, 
Alexander the Great conquered the vast empire of the Persian king Darius III, which included the Middle East, Egypt, and Persia. Alexander the Great was the first globalist in world history who dreamed of creating a world empire. In 329 BC, Alexander the Great began the conquest of Central Asia by capturing Sogdiana. After the capture of Samarkand, the Macedonian turned to the Jahardis River, Sirdaria, but met stubborn resistance from the Saks and Masagets. Spitamen, the son of a Sak woman, led an uprising against the Macedonians. In seven cities located in the valleys of the Jahardis, the Macedonian garrisons were defeated. The Macedonian army was in a difficult situation, so the Macedonian army sent part of the army against the rebels. According to the description of the Roman historian Arian, the Macedonians began crossing the Jakartes River to the right bank. The Saxons began to attack the Macedonian cavalry with arrows. A large detachment of Macedonians was defeated. Alexander the Great, having crossed to the right bank, began an attack on the Saxons. The Saxons went to the steppe. Alexander the Great did not pursue them as he was wounded in battle by an arrow. Spitamen was forced to lift the siege of Samarkand and together with the Saxons began to wage a partisan war, not getting involved in serious battles. The next battle took place on the banks of the Polymet Zaravshin River. The Macedonians during the river crossing were fired upon by the arrows of the Sox soldiers of Spitamen. The Macedonians suffered heavy losses. The Sox, not getting involved in the battle, went to the steppe. Probably, Alexander the Great, given the bitter experience of the Persian king Cyrus, did not pursue the Sox. The exhausting war with the Sox continued for another two years. After that, peace was concluded. The Usun state was one of the first states on the territory of Kazakhstan. In the west, the state border was along the Chu and Talas rivers. In the east, to Lake Alakol. In the south, from Lake Isakul. In the north, to Lake Balkhash. Usuns were nomads related to the tribes of the Saks and Masagets. The supreme power belonged to the ruler with the title of Gunmo. The headquarters, the capital of state, the city of Chigu, was located on the western shore of Lake Isakul. The reign of Gunmo Tsilimi is 45 to 14 BC, considered to be the heyday of the Usun state. The Usuns had diplomatic relations with the Chinese Empire of Han, as well as with the emperors of the Huns, entered into family relations with them, took Chinese and Hunnic princesses as wives. The Usuns were engaged in cattle breeding, horse breeding, bred thoroughbred horses, were engaged in agriculture and gardening. According to historical sources, the population of the country reached 630,000 people. The Usuns could gather an army of up to 30,000 people. To the west of the Usuns was the state of Kangi. The Kangis are related tribes to the Usuns. They roamed along the Sirdaria and Talas rivers up to the Aral Sea. Kangis are mentioned in sources in 134 BC. The population was about 600,000 people. The capital of the state was located in the city of Bityan. Kangis were engaged in cattle breeding, agriculture, and minted their own coins. The Kangis had diplomatic and trade relations with China, Transcaucasus, and Byzantium. The ruler of the Kangis, under pressure from the Usuns, in 60 BC, invited the Huns to fight against the Usuns. The Huns, together with the Kangis, made several successful campaigns against the Usuns. The Kangis built a fortress on the banks of the Talas for the Huns. In 36 BC, the fortress of the Huns fell after a bloody battle against the Han troops who invaded the territory of Kangis. To the north of China was the Great Steppe, where the tribes of nomadic herders lived for centuries. They worshipped the great Tengri, the eternal sky who created the surrounding world. 
According to the English historian Edward Parker, who referred to historical sources, a single nomadic tree about 3,000 years ago was divided into the Proto-Turkic tribes of the Huns, later the Turks, and the Tungus-speaking peoples, the Dunhu, later the Xianbi, the Wuhan, and the Manchus. The first mention of the Huns in Chinese sources is known from 400 BC. In the 3rd century BC, China was united into a single state, the Han Empire. In 210 BC, the Huns created their own state. Duman became the first Kagan of the Huns. In 209 BC, his son Mode, Maji, became the Kagan. The full title of the Kagan of the Huns is Tengri Kut Ranye, the messenger of the eternal sky. To protect the country from the Huns, China built the Great Wall of China, a line of millennial confrontation and struggle, the Huns and the Han, the ancestors of the Chinese. Millions of human lives have come to an end along this wall. Mode conquered the southern territories from China, which had previously been taken from the Huns. He conquered new lands in the east, from Korea to East Turkestan in the west, and created a huge empire. The Chinese Empire recognized the state of the Huns as equal to the Han Empire. Under the pressure of the Huns, China paid tribute every year, opening an exchange trade on the border, beneficial to the Huns. Chinese diplomacy, unable to defeat the Huns by force, through bribery of the leaders of the Huns, split their ranks. In 48 AD, eight southern Hunnic clans elected their Kagan. The Hun Empire was divided into north and south. The southern Huns accepted vassal dependence on China and began to fight against the northern Huns. The northern Hunnic Kaganat, having existed for more than 300 years, disintegrated in 155 AD. After the collapse of the Kaganat, part of the Huns left to the territory of modern Kazakhstan. Part of the Huns went to the Volga River. In 370 AD, the Huns launched an offensive from the Volga to the west, where the tribes of the East Germans lived, the Goths. Some of the Goths accepted the rule of the Huns. Some went to the Byzantine Empire. In 395, the Huns invaded the Eastern Roman Empire in the Balkans, as well as Asia Minor through the North Caucasus, defeated the Roman army, and invaded Syria. In 422, the Huns conquered Pannonia, Hungary, and reached the Rhine River. In 434, Attila, Adil, the son of Rua, became the Kagan of the Huns. In 437, the Huns conquered the Germanic kingdom of the Burgundians. In 441 and 447, Attila invaded and defeated the Eastern Roman Empire. Emperor Theodosius made peace with the Huns on difficult terms with the payment of tribute. In 451, the Huns began a war against the Western Roman Empire. Attila invaded Gaul, modern France, in July 451. The Battle of the Huns against the Romans took place in the Cataluan fields. It was the largest battle in history. Eastern Germanic and Slavic tribes fought on the side of the Huns, West Germanic and Gaul tribes on the side of the Romans. The losses on both sides were enormous. The battle ended in a draw. In 452, having crossed the Alps, Attila invaded Italy. Having seized the north of the country, the Huns approached Rome. Rome was in a panic. The empire asked for peace. Emperor Valentinian sent an embassy led by Pope Leo to Attila. The Pope asked Attila to spare Rome, a city with world culture, with the payment of tribute on any terms. Attila spared Rome. So diplomacy saved Rome. Pope Leo was canonized by the church, becoming saint and great. Attila was a great statesman. In a short time, he created a huge state. Europe stood on its knees before the Huns. In the medieval German ballad, the saga of the Nebelungs, Attila was described as a German king under the name Etzel. In 453, Attila died. His sons could not save the state and the empire began to disintegrate.
In 552 AD, the Ashina clan united the Turkic tribes into a single state. The Turks in Altai mastered the production of iron, made weapons and armor, and created well-armed cavalry. The spiritual worldview of the Turks, like their ancestors the Huns, was Tengrianism, the veneration of the great god Tengri. The sources contain information about the laws in the ancient Turkic society. Such crimes as theft of cattle, betrayal, adultery with another man's wife, were punishable by death. The Yasa of Genghis Khan repeats the ancient Turkic codes. Bumin became the first Kagan in 552. A year later, his son Mugan became the second Kagan, who was one of the most prominent Turkic Kagans. In 555, the Turks defeated the Zhuzhan and Hitan. In 565, the Turks defeated the Hephthalid state in Central Asia and included the whole of Central Asia in their structure. In 568, the Turks concluded a treaty with Byzantium and began a war with Iran. In 571, peace was concluded with Iran. In 578, the Turks launched a military invasion of China. China was defeated and paid tribute. In 580, a huge Turkic empire was created from Korea to the Caucasus. Skillful Chinese diplomacy, as in the case of the Huns through bribery, split the Turkic Kaganat. In 600, the Kaganat split into Eastern and Western. In 630, the Eastern Kaganat was unexpectedly defeated by China and lost its independence. In 604, Tunjabu Khan became the Khan of the Western Kaganat, with a headquarters in the city of Chach, Tashkent. In 626, he started a war against Iran. In 628, Tunjabu Khan invaded Transcaucasia, defeated the Persian and Georgian troops, capturing Tifidis, Tbilisi. In 631, Tunjabu Khan died, and the turmoil began in the Western Kaganat. In 640, the Western Turks were defeated and fell into vassal dependence on China. In 679, the Turks of the Eastern Kaganat revolted against the Chinese Empire. They said, We were a sovereign, imperial people. Where is our state? In 693, the war of the Turks against China began. In 701, the Turks defeated the Chinese troops. In 703, the Tang Empire made peace with the Turks. In 716, Bilge Khan became the Kagan. Together with his brother Kul Tegin and advisor Ton Yukuk, they began to revive the second Turkic Kaganat. This great three persons has won victory over external and internal enemies. Their great deeds are carved in Turkic runes in the Kul Tegin Monument in 732. In 744, the Ashina dynasty was replaced by the Uyghur Yaglikar clan. In 744, the Oguz Turks created a new state, the Uyghur Kaganat. The first Kagan was Kutluk Kul Bilge Khan, who restored the capital of the Turks, Karakorum. In 745, his son, Moyanchur, came to power. The ruling clan was Oguz clan Yaglikar. The spiritual worldview of the Goguz was Tengrianism, the cult of the sky. In 755, Moyanchur united the Turkic tribes of Tatars, Kurluks, Basmals, and Turgeshes by force, creating a large state from western Manchuria to the Black Irtish. The Uyghurs were one of the most civilized Turkic peoples. They replaced the Turkic runic alphabet with Uyghur, or Old Naiman alphabet. In 755, a civil war broke out in China. The rebels inflicted a number of defeats on government forces. The civil war in China lasted 10 years. The Chinese emperor from the Tang dynasty turned to the Kagan Moyanchur for help. The intervention of the Uyghur Turks in China ended with the suppression of the uprising, as well as epidemics that claimed millions of Chinese lives. China lay in ruins. It was the bloodiest civil war in history. The population decline was enormous. According to the census, it dropped from 53 million to 17 million people by 36 million. 
China paid a huge tribute to the Uyghur Kaganat in the amount of 20,000 pieces of silk annually in recognition of the contribution of the Uyghur state to the suppression of the uprising. The Silk Road passed through the Uyghur Kaganat. The country grew rich, culture and crafts developed. During a campaign in China, the Uyghur Kagan adopted a new faith, Manichaeism, which led to a spiritual crisis. In 840, the country suffered natural disasters, a huge loss of livestock, which led to famine. Dissensions began within the Kaganat. The Kyrgyz invaded the country. The Kaganat fell apart. Part of the Uyghurs fled south to Gangzhou, creating a principality in 902. Part of the Uyghurs left for the Turfan oasis, creating a new state, the Turfan Principality. In the 10th century, a part of the Oguz created the Naiman Khanat, which existed until 1204. Part of the Oguz in the 11th century created the state of Kerets, which existed until 1203. In the 13th century, the Naimans and Kerets were conquered by Genghis Khan and became part of his empire. The collapse of the Kaganat caused the migration of the Turks, Oguz, Kimaks, Kipchaks, who were previously part of the Uyghur and Turkic Kaganats to the west. The Turks created new states that changed the course of world history. At the beginning of the 8th century, the Arab Caliphate began the conquest of Central Asia. In 712, the Arab commander Kuteba conquered Samarkand and began an invasion of the territory of South Kazakhstan. The territory of the Turgesh Kaganat was located in the interfluv of the Chu and Ili rivers in the Semerichi. The headquarters of the Kagan was in the city of Suyab. In 716, Sulu became the Kagan of the Turgeshes. The Turks' Turgeshes inflicted a number of defeats on the Arabs, especially in 724. Kagan Sulu was a talented commander and had a great authority among the people. The Turgeshes were a formidable force in the fight against the Arabs. In 701, the Turgeshes, in alliance with the Sogdians, liberated Samarkand and began to drive out the Arabs. In the same year, the city of Balkh was liberated from the Arabs. In 737, Kagan Sulu made a new campaign against the Arabs and reached Tokharistan, where he united with the Karluks. In 738, Kagan Sulu died as a result of a conspiracy. The state of the Turgeshes began to disintegrate. In 766, the lands of the Turgeshes were captured by the Karluks. The Karluk tribes were previously part of the Turkic and Uyghur Kaganats. The borders of the Karluk Kaganat began from the Jungar Alatau to the middle flows of the Sir Darya River. In 766, the Karluks conquered the Semeriche from the Turgesh. In 747, the Tang Empire sent troops to Central Asia. In June 751, two armies, the Chinese and the Arab, met on the Talas River. The battle lasted three days. In the beginning, the Karluks kept neutrality, and then they entered the battle on the side of the Arabs and defeated the Chinese. The Chinese army fled. The Battle of Talas was of great historical importance. The Tang Empire began a political crisis that led to a civil war in 755. The Karluk Kaganat existed until 940. In the same year, the Karakhanid Turks captured the headquarters of the Karluks, the city of Balasagan. After that, the Karluk state fell. In 940, the Turkic tribes of Karluks, Turgeshes, Yagma, and others created the state of the Karakhanids in Semeriche and Kashgaria. The first Khan was Bilge Kur Kadir Khan. In 910, Sotuk Bogra Khan converted to Islam, which became the official religion of the state. In 990, the Karakhanids began a war with the Samanids, an Iranian-speaking state in Central Asia. In 999, the Samanids were defeated. The Turks captured Bukhara and Samarkand. The Karakhanids expanded the borders of their state from the east from the Irtish River in the west to the Amu Darya River. In 1042, the Kaganat was divided into western and eastern. 
In 1210, the Western Kaganat disintegrated. In 1212, the Eastern Kaganat collapsed. After the collapse of the Uyghur Kaganat in the 9th century, the migration of the Oghuz Turks, who were part of the Uyghur Kaganat to the west, to the territory of Kazakhstan began. The Oghuz state occupied the territory from the middle course of the Sir Darya River and the Aral Sea to the northwest to the Caspian Sea. The supreme ruler had the title of Yabgu. An important role in the Oghuz state was played by the commander of the troops, Subashi. The capital was the city of Yagikent, located in the valleys of the Ishim and Nura rivers. The number of Oghuz tribes numbered up to 24. In 922, the embassy of the Baghdad Caliph visited the Oghuz state. The population of the Oghuz state numbered up to 1 million people. The Oghuz state existed until the beginning of the 11th century. Part of the Oghuz went west towards the southern Russian steppes, pushing back the Pechening Turks. In 965, an alliance was concluded between the Kiev prince Sviatoslav and the Oghuz against the Khazar Khaganat. In the same year, the Khazar Turks were defeated by the united troops of the Kiev prince and the Oghuz. In 965, the troops of the Kiev prince Vladimir and the Oghuz took part in a joint campaign against the Volga Bulgaria. In Russian chronicles, the Oghuz were called Turks. The movement of the Oghuz continued through the southern Russian steppes to the Balkans, the territory of the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Emperor allocated lands in Macedonia to the Oghuz. Oghuz were accepted into service in the Byzantine army. 